Okay, in this video, we're gonna go through creating the cat rig from scratch for my character here, the Toothy. And uh, I'm gonna do some just basic Mac stuff to start off um, before we get into the cat thing. This, basically, I'm gonna be, be rigging this character and I wanna see the mesh, but I don't wanna click on it so that I accidentally, you know, scale the thing all crazy or, or rotate it off something. Um, I just wanna make sure that he's set at 000 and he's got no scales on him and all that. So this is basic Mac stuff. Uh, we go into the utility panel, give him a reset X form. Transform, right click, convert, poly, good. He's uh, he's at zero, zero, uh, zero. If you look down here um, in your max, there'll be three little text boxes. Um, and those are basically your X, Y, and Z values. And those are all zeroed out. And I just like to have everything at zero. It makes everything kind of clean from the start. And then I don't want to, uh, to I don't want to see the whole mesh as soon as I start making bones it's going to be hard to see inside of them so I use alt x to put them into see-through mode and then I don't want to click on them like I was talking about before so I freeze the selection so you should have your character looks something like this maybe with less teeth but so now we're going to create the cat rig and to do that we're going to go into the create section of the command panel then helpers then cat objects in the rollout and then there's cat parent, cat muscle, muscle strand, and we're just gonna be going through the uh, cat parent stuff in this video. So when I click on cat parent, you can see that this rollout um, should pop up for you. And inside of here are all the uh, preset rigs or rigs that you've saved. You know, I've done this guy a couple of times, so those are there down there. Um, and if we're creating a rig from scratch, we wanna make sure that this is on none. Otherwise, we're gonna, we're gonna make one of these. And we're gonna drag out an ape. We don't wanna do that, although it's pretty neat. So go to none. And then I'm gonna uh, drag out a cat parent pretty close to 000, and then I'm gonna make it so that his feet land inside of uh, this thing, because I watched some video that said to do that, and it seems like it makes sense it's from a scale perspective. And then I uh, select the cat parent object, uh, go into move mode, and zero it out as well. Just good practice to keep everything straight and lined up. Okay, so now that we have a cat parent object and we have no rig, uh, we need to start building the rig. And you do that by going into the modifier panel, and you have the cat parent object selected and then you go down to the bottom here and you can see we have create pelvis and add rigging so create a pelvis sometimes that doesn't show up right away i've noticed a little video card glitch um, so you might need to, to wiggle your viewport uh, to get the pelvis to show up um, but in this case i'm using hardware shading it doesn't seem to have that problem so now i'm going to be using my move rotate and scale tools to uh, manipulate this pelvis into the right spot and we'll just do that by you know, moving it down getting about the right place Scaling it out and uh, and scaling it a bit so that it is like so. I'm gonna, ask, I'm gonna also tilt it forward a tiny bit and move it back. It's just preference. Okay, at this point I need a leg, so I'm going to add a leg by having the pelvis selected and going over to the command panel and seeing the add leg button and pressing that. And when it adds the leg, it builds a leg setup for you, including two bones, an ankle, and then an end effector control down here the spline that lets you move the leg around. And you can see by this little line right there, it's an IK solution. Um, there is FK, IK blending inside of here as well. So it's uh, pretty flexible in that regard. So what I do first to position this leg is I move the uh, controller, the foot controller, over to where the bottom of my foot is. And you'll notice that I don't have feet on my character, so I'm gonna eventually delete this foot. But uh, in the, this controller is gonna control the, the entire chain where it points to. So before I even mess around with bones, I'm just gonna move that thing to where I want it to be. And then the beginning of the leg, you know, it's pretty much where I want it to be. I mean, you know, you can move it two different ways. We can move the pelvis. You know, we haven't built anything off of this uh, up, so we're not screwing anything up the chain there. Um, and then if I want to, I can scale the pelvis out and kind of do that sort of biped style. Um, but then we can also grab this bone and move it around. The thing I would keep in mind is that you want to make sure that the bone is somewhat aligned. Um, you want it slightly bent along the axis that you want the knee to bend on. So right now you can see when we go from the side, um, it's got a super, super bent knee and then this, you know, this foot down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kill the foot because I don't need it. And you can see that by, by deleting that bone, it didn't do, it didn't kill the rig. It just got rid of that bone. Um, and then I'm going to move this stuff basically to where I want it to be and make sure there's just a little bit of bend in the knee. And then that way, when I, when I go to grab this thing and he starts walking and moving it, it bends the right way. If it's perfectly straight, it's more than likely going to get screwed up. So. Um, and then, you know, position the leg again, you can, we can move it around a couple of different ways. I'm just going to scale it out a little bit more. Good enough. So now, uh, now that we have one leg, we can keep moving up and going up the spine, or we can go ahead and add another leg. Um, 
the cool thing about cat is that when you've made one limb on one side and you add another one, it assumes that you want it on the other side and it does all the same settings. So that's pretty cool. And one thing I want to get through or show you before we move on to the rest of it is that each one of these bones, these little setups right here are considered limbs. And then this guy right here is a hub. And so if you look inside the modifier panel, you'll see it says hub setup. And then right here it says limb setup. So that's kind of the, the whole, you know, idea of cat is, you know, hubs and limbs. Um, so when you have a hub, it's where everything is, is kind of the root of a bunch of objects. And then you can break it off um, with a spine and, and have another hub at the top that you can then break your arms off of and stuff. And so you'll, you'll see that you'll see how that kind of happens as you move through it. Um, but ultimately, ultimately, it's what allows you to uh, make, you know, weird rigs that you wouldn't be able to do with a biped. Um, so the one thing before we move on, I wanted to show is that uh, in the limbs uh, for arms and legs, especially there are uh, segment bones that you can do. And basically what that's going to do is uh, allow you to do twist bones. So if you see um, in the leg right here, because this is a cartoony character, sometime when he gets to, uh, to extreme poses, having skin based on just one envelope here and one envelope here, it just looks bad. So I kind of want that distributed across a couple of bones and it's w definitely much more important up on the arm. You'll see that up there, but we'll go ahead and do that on the leg as well. So twist bones are easy to add. It's basically, um, you know, you can see this leg is made up of two bones and that's the limb, but then inside of each bone, you can see I'm picking it, it says bone name one, and then this will be bone name two. Um, inside of here, you can say how many segments each bone has. So in this case, I'll just put it to three. And so now you can see that the, uh, the leg has three segment bones. And when we start moving it around and animating it, you'll see uh, why that's good, if you don't already know. So uh, same thing I did before, I'm just gonna do add a leg and you can see this time it has the segments in there as well because it, it looks at what your last one was. And then uh, just for, uh, for fun, we'll add another leg. And it's, you know, you can see that you can just keep adding legs and, and arms or whatever you want to make this grotesque three-legged thing. Sure. And they're all based off of this hub. So when I move it around, you know, that's what you get. So I'm going to kill my tripod. I'm going to really kill it. There we go. And then we're going to get moving on building the spine. So I'm going to select my hub, the pelvis hub, and say add spine. And what it did right there is it adds a couple of bones connecting to another hub object. And when I move this around, you can see those bones try to keep up with it. Um, you have control over how many bones are in the middle there. If we wanted to, I can say 20. And then when I move it around, you'll see you'll get a lot more accurate or just, you know, more bones, whatever that is. It's kind of weird. So in this case, uh, for this character, I don't need that many, or anywhere near that. I'll just set it to four. And then I want his, uh, his rib cage to be rolled back a little bit. So I'll grab it like that and rotate it back. And then just position it where I would think the rib cage would be. Um, so at this point, I'm not so much looking at the boxes. I'm looking at the pivots because that is kind of all that matters at this point, where the guy is going to rotate from. So we've got that hub in place. And uh, I could stand to be a little bit higher. And then I'm going to go and grab these bones. I'm going to double click on the bottom one and deselect the top one. And then go into local mode by alt right clicking. And that brings up this little menu and go to local. And then I'm just going to local scale them out a little bit just so they match the character a little bit better. Not necessary, but fun and easy. OK, now I'm going to start off on making an arm. So we'll go to this hub up here, the chest hub, and build an arm by saying add arm. Simple. So just like I went into the local mode by doing uh, alt right click, I'm going to go into screen space now to uh, position this hand and this arm. Screen space for me is, is pretty useful for positioning things like this where I kind of want to just use the plane of the screen to determine where I'm moving objects. So first thing I do is land the clavicle where I want it to be. And I'm not really looking at the boxes again. I'm just looking at the pivots. Uh, sure, good enough. You know, it could be forward a little bit more. Whatever, we move it later. Um, and then I grab the hand and get it generally about where it should be. Like so. It looks janky right now, but it'll be okay in a second. And then I'll just, you know, scale it up while I'm, while I'm there. And I'll uh, move to local for scale again. And those transfer modes um, stick to your rotate, your position mode, uh, 
rotation and scale. So if I go back to move, it'll be back in screen space. And then one thing I do when I'm moving in screen space as well uh, is you know you roll over the gizmo and then hit X, and that makes the gizmo go away, so I can't accidentally send things off flying off in Z. So again, I'm just moving bones around to where I think they should be. And where's the elbow on this guy? Something like that. Okay, and then the hand is about in the right place. Turn my gizmo back on. And uh, good enough for right now. And then the one thing I want to address uh, before I move any further is the forearm and, and, uh, and bicep bones here. Um, I am eventually going to put twist bones on them, but if I put them on right now, it's going to try to split the difference between the clavicle and the uh, forearm bone. So if you see right here, I can put it and put three bones on there. So the fact that it's already twisted up in our root uh, figure pose is worrisome to me. I mean, it, it's fine. I mean, they're just, they're rotated, but I'd rather those be zeroed out. So the thing that I do, which, you know, again, seems a little janky, but ends up working out in the end, is just rotate the, uh, the forearm back to line up with that arm and get it so those twist bones are, are back to, to being squared up. And then just take the arm and or the hand and move it to where I want it to be and rotate it around and such. So there might be a better way of doing that. I hope that you know at some point someone can show me a better way of having the arm not be twisted up. But in the meantime, we do that and it works fine. So I've got this hand bone and uh, I'm just going to quickly put it in place. I'm kind of speeding through this so that you're not watching me position, rotation, scale bones for an hour and a half. That's what you get to do. So pick the hand. And then I want to add fingers. So fingers are considered digits. So I'm going to have four of them. There they are. And then I'm going to quickly rotate them into place. And you'll notice that when I grab the root finger, it does this kind of typical cat behavior. So get around that. I just right click on them or double click on them and, and uh, pick them all and move them. There are some settings that I've noticed in the hierarchy panel in the link info. Um, but I haven't really dug into those yet. So when I do, I will put up another video and explain those. So now I'm just, uh, you know, rotating these fingers. And when I selected them all and I rotated them, it just moves as one big group because I don't have my uh, transform center set appropriately. So I'm going to change that. And that is up the top here. I'm sorry that the capture window doesn't catch it. It's uh, right next to where it says your coordinate center, local, world, whatever, this drop down. It's to the right of that. And you want to use, uh, use pivot point center. And that'll make it so that each object rotates. Now, you can, you can do this for each finger, rotate them and move them into place, or you can get one of them about where you want it to be. Both of those rotations were kind of bad. And let's say that's good. Um, and then pick on the finger and go over here in your command panel and do copy digit settings. And then go to one of your other fingers and paste it. And same with this, and same with this. And it picks up the transform of the object a little bit, a little bit of the rotation and it offsets a little bit, but it gets your fingers into those poses quickly. So I'll rotate that down and then double click on it and bring it here. And then uh, the thumb's a little bit bigger, so I'll just go scale them like so and move and rotate them. Good enough for now. Same thing with the fingers over here and there. And that. And our last trick. Like so. And I have a rotation snap on, angle snap, so take that off. Alright, we'll rotate that up. And then do a little bit of this action. Okay. Good enough. So there are our fingers, and they're in place well enough. And so what we want to do is make another arm on the other side. And that's easy. We just go to that hub at the top, add arm. And because everything's all zeroed out and the character's you know, symmetrical, everything should land in the right place. And then the last thing we need to do is the head. And 